What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into another video. Today we're gonna to be showing you a little trick on our K-Series build. We're gonna be making pistons and engine parts that look as dirty as this, crusty and disgusting, into beautiful shiny engine parts like this. Is it a new piston? Absolutely not, but let me tell you, this is as clean as it gets and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step in this video. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell beforehand. And if you enjoyed this video at the end of it, make sure to hit a like on it because it would really help us out. All right, so for you guys who aren't familiar with the channel, this is a primarily Honda YouTube channel. Obviously we do a whole bunch of other builds as well. Uh, this is our sport front wheel drive style front wheel drive turbo Integra. The motor that we're working on right now is over here on the engine stand. This is a K series that's gonna be for a daily driver slash NA build, something mild, not as aggressive as this, but it's gonna be a nice refreshed motor that we're doing right now. If you haven't seen the older videos or the social media posts on this, when we picked up this motor, it was completely submerged in water. The car itself had gone into a creek or a lake, sat there for a day, and then the car stayed outside for over a year. Now, we actually cleaned up the whole engine, uh, the head and the block. It had a whole bunch of grime on it, and you can see that in the older videos if you wanna see exactly how we did that. We got it torn down. Every single nut and bolt on the engine has been taken off. All the internals are over here on the shelf, as well as in those bins right there. The complete engine is getting refreshed, and one of the important things, especially not only with an older motor, but a motor that's gone through so much abuse and water contamination like this one, we need to get all the grime off of it. You can see the cams are still super affected on it. Crankshaft, not as much, but the rollers, everything has been gunked up and a whole bunch of nasty buildup has happened on the pistons. For example, the pistons being the worst of it all, this had literal water in the cylinders and it made this piston look disgusting. Not only had it corroded the rings onto the aluminum, steel rings onto aluminum pistons, but it also damaged the surface finish on this. Now this should still be salvageable. We're actually gonna show you a product that uh, we picked up at Walmart that we've used in the past and helps a lot with this type of grime and buildup. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this one down right now. I've already cleaned one and I have another soaking at the time being. Let me go ahead and walk over here. It's gonna be kind of a quick video so I already have some of this in the process. This is a, I think piston number two that's just gone in about five minutes ago and it was as dirty as the one that I just showed you. You can see some of the grime is still on there. Let's see, just with a little bit of rubbing action right there. Dip it back in. That grime is leaving. Just five minutes already in here. See the piston top? No scrubbing. This is literally just wiping away all that grime. Now this isn't some crazy hard to find product. The chemical that we're actually dipping in, this into can be bought at your local Walmart, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, wherever you can get your car part cleaners. And it's actually a very well-known product. It's been around for, I wanna say like 50, 60 years, but not a lot of people know how good it is since not a lot of people test it out. Uh, to my knowledge, it's only sold in this big uh, 2.8 liter container, but it's good because you can completely submerge your parts into there and it's not abrasive. Your hands aren't gonna get torn up from it by just playing with it a little bit right here while you're cleaning things. It is Berryman Chem Dip Carburetor Parts Cleaner. Now, when using this on any type of metal part, you wanna make sure that the part isn't a very, very brittle type of metal. Uh, in this instance, steel doesn't have a rating on how long it can be in here. Aluminum, per the instructions, is recommended to only be here at a maximum of four hours, just because of uh, how the cleaner works in relation to metals. Uh, obviously, this only takes about 15, 20 minutes to get fully cleaned. Right now, like I said, five minutes in, and it's already coming off a whole bunch of grime. Uh, we're gonna leave it in there for about half an hour altogether and then clean it up. Okay, so this piston right here was actually the first one that we cleaned. You can see it is literally spotless. You would think it's a new piston just by looking at it from the top angle right here. Let's see if we can get a nice reflection on there in the light. And the reflection on it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see a little bit of uh, still buildup right there in the dishes but that's just because with your finger, you can't really get the grooves out too much. A big thing that happened with this, like I said, the rings are actually rusting in their, like in its spot. Um, before we actually were able to take them out, we had to kind of pry them out, but uh, there was a lot of buildup and gunk in these little ports right there. That got cleaned up. I could still pass a little bit of a napkin in there, 
get it super cleaned up, but the ports themselves, you can't see because of this angle, but uh, the ports itself are 100% clean. It's just a little bit of surface grime in there that needs to be cleaned up a bit. But this is your final result. The wrist pin is nice and loose. There is a little bit of surface rust on the inside of the wrist pin, which I'm actually just gonna clean up right now with a paper towel and some WD-40. But these pistons, along with the rod, cap and bolts, look like it's brand new, ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the process on the second piston over there and rod, and then get the other two pistons right there cleaned up in just a few minutes. And in the next video, we'll actually be able to assemble this motor. All right, we're about 35, 40 minutes in on these pistons. Now I've already gone in and kind of rubbed off the tops and these are near mint. See these right here. All those deposits have really come off and this is like the third time that I've taken it out to try to clean it up a little bit. And it's crazy the difference how these are looking so much cleaner. Uh, another thing that we can kind of do right here, if you have one of these uh, scrubby pads from the kitchen, you can also go like this, just something not super abrasive. Now, obviously this isn't gonna do anything damaging to the piston. I've actually used this just a second ago to try to take off a little bit of the grime on there. It wasn't all just rubbing it off. And um, one last little cleaning tool that I wanna use. It's just this little plastic brush. I don't wanna use anything wire wheel on this. Although you can, it's not really gonna mess anything up. You can use wire wheel on this type of component, you'll be all right. I'd just rather use something like this, like a plastic brush. And I like to go in the ring lens to try to clean up where those rings are gonna ride, especially where the oil control rings are gonna go, since that is such a tight fit and that's uh, the most affected ring for the corrosion, at least for the pistons in this instance. And you can see these are coming out really, really clean. I'm getting most of the gunk out of those ring lands. You can see they're pretty clean right there. It looks like there's a pretty heavy stain right there. I'm gonna go ahead and let it soak for a few more minutes after I get the last cleaning right here. cleaning it up as much as I can. And we'll give it a last soak just to try to get it to uh, as clean as we can right now. Okay, we are pretty much wrapping this up with the last one right here. This was piston number two. And you could see that there was a little bit of extra um, debris in there. And it looks like there is a bit of damage on that piston. Nothing crazy, but that's where the main uh, gunk was built up on this one. Uh, this looks like it'll still be able to be ran. Obviously that hole doesn't protrude and there are a couple little divots right there, whatever you wanna call them, but we should still be able to send it. You know how it is. One thing to keep in mind, uh, per the product instru instructions, the actual cleaning liquid, uh, this is to be cleaned with water, whatever you're cleaning with that liquid, water after it's been taken out of that solution. And obviously with anything that's a steel or rustable component, after it's cleaned with water, spray it off with some compressed air. I'm going to actually go over with some WD-40, make sure that there's not any surface rust that starts to build up on this since it's out exposed to the air. And since we'll be assembling the engine fairly soon, uh, once it's in the engine with oil, that won't have any rust issues unless the car gets sunk again and the motor goes underwater again, which that's not gonna happen. So yeah, guys, that was a nice little short video. Hopefully it's a good tech trick if you guys are cleaning some engine components or any components for that matter. Uh, Berryman Chem Dip Carburetor Parts Cleaner. This isn't an endorsement or anything. I just know it's a really great product that I use here every single day in my garage whenever I'm cleaning parts like this. Hope you guys are subscribed. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit the button that says subscribe with the notification bell. And we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.